In this presentation, I will be talking about social inequalities, social class, socioeconomic status and some theories that could change our society. I will be discussing these topics in relation to two areas that I have visited, the first being Manor Park and secondly Mayfair. Just by looking at the map, I can see what is available to those living in the certain areas. In Manor Park, we have religious temples for Catholics and Hindus in particular, cemeteries, care homes, community centres, Indian restaurants, corner shops and a few public primary schools. In comparison, Mayfair has quite a few hotels, a Royal Academy of Arts, the Embassy of Japan, galleries, high-end stores such as Louis Vuitton, Victoria's Secrets and Chanel. They also have some French restaurants and a casino. When comparing the areas of learning, we can see how different the environments of the schools are. Manor Park reminds me very much of my school, the way it is isolated from other buildings by a big metal gate all around the school, giving it a cold prison-like feeling. The old Victorian buildings that have not changed much since being built. Whereas we have the Academy of Arts in Mayfair, it is based in a more open space. And even though the building may seem old, the light colours give it a warmer feeling, more professional. Just by having a school building that different to someone else can have an effect. The government is not providing money for public primary schools to improve their buildings, access to different resources, or even the areas where the schools are based. Here we can see how class division and class power have direct and immediate effects on schooling, profoundly restricting young people's learning and development, as suggested by Smith and Ringley. When visiting Manor Park, as well said by Grenfell, I felt completely like a fish out of water. I was surrounded by a dominating culture that was different to the one I was raised in and it made me feel quite anxious. All the hairdresser, lawyers and shopkeeper positions were dominated by the South Asian culture and so were most fruit stores, restaurants and even car garages. Manor Park was mainly a council house area and in fact I came across one council housing area which was super quiet as seen in image C. I noticed a man standing by the corner of the house, so I instantly turned back and walked away. I believe that my actions happened because of how council people are portrayed as uneducated and dangerous. In this area, many of the streets are packed with houses and look very much alike. Many places providing food are halal due, due to the dominating South Asian culture and their beliefs. As I was walking through the streets, there were not many people speaking English. I am not sure what the languages were spoken, but I believe that most of the language spoken originated from South Asia. When I arrived back to Manor Park Underground Station, I noticed a group of school children going on a field trip. They all used the underground to get to their destination. In comparison to private school children, the governments are not providing enough funding for schools to hire minibuses, which would make school trips not only a lot safer, but also less stressful for the teachers. In the area of Manor Park, I felt like a stranger and I felt as though everyone was looking at me for a number of reasons. One, for example, my basic clothing compared to their traditional and religious clothes. I don't think I could go back feeling more comfortable, and this is very similar to when authorities try to int introduce wider participation at universities. Brown suggested that participation in higher education in the UK has increased dramatically over the past 30 years. The proportion of 18 to 30 year olds going into higher education has reached 44% with a government target set at 50% by 2010. However, the increase in participation has done little to balance rates of participation by socio-economic groups. They believe that inv invitation and access is enough. However, I believe that the students should feel comfortable and welcome at university because majority of students are the first in their family to attend. If they join and see how other students come from more privileged families, they will then feel like a fish out of water and will not want to come back. Dorling provides a good example using Finland's schooling system. Finland is where 99.2% of school education is state-funded. In Finland, there is no inspection of teachers or league tables. Pupils are not set or streamed. And in four international surveys since 2000, Finnish comprehensive school students have scored above students in all other participating countries. In comparison to education in the UK, we can see that if we were to also follow the ways of the Finnish, the students would be a lot more relaxed and parents would have less stress about providing their children with needed resources. When visiting Mayfair, I did not feel too much like a fish out of water, because Mayfair seemed to be quite diverse in many ways. 
There were many people from all over the world, and a lot of the people were from Asia, France, and other European countries. Everyone was very different from each other, so I didn't feel as though I had to look a certain way. In comparison to Manor Park, where a lot of the people were dressed in South Asian clothing, making me stand out. Many people in Mayfair seemed to be hiring the black taxis, which for someone like me would be too expensive and I would use public transport such as buses instead. When walking through Mayfair streets, I came across many different buildings and companies, most of which were dominated by high-end stores seen in pictures A and D. During rush hour, most of the streets seemed to be super busy as everyone was heading home or out to eat in one of the many expensive restaurants available. There seemed to be a variety of occupations dominated by a mixture of different cultures. There were a few florists, bakers, security lawyers and many more. A part of me did feel comfortable in this area. However, seeing many people in suits with bags of high-end shops and people heading to expensive restaurants brought me back a little and reminded me that I am just from a working class family who then decided to eat something in McDonald's. Another observation I had made was the amount of homeless people that I saw in Mayfair compared to Manor Park. I believe that I would have seen a lot more homeless people in Manor Park since it's majorly a council area. However, after seeing so many people in Mayfair, I began to question why. I thought it could be because the homeless people could get more money from the middle class individuals. But after I had spent some time observing a homeless guy, I began to see that it was the tourists that were given spare change more than any middle class individual. Which leads me on to my next slide. Merrick reported that the rich are getting richer while the poor are getting poorer. He presented statistics showing that the income of the richest fifth of households grew by 4.7%, whilst the income of the poorest fifth of household fell by 1.6%. Oxfam also have calculated that the richest 1% now have as much wealth as the rest of the world combined. This will majorly affect not only single parents, but also big working class families which will also have an effect on the children's socialization and habitus, meaning that the parents and the schools will not be able to provide the same opportunities as those who are in the middle or upper class. So what can be done about the increase of division in social classes? One approach was believed to be social mobility. Bronsky and Hassan suggested that social mobility was believed to equalise our divided society where privileged middle and upper class individuals would have an open access to secondary and higher education. This would automatically be benefit them in many ways. To name a few, we, we can start with their social network, meaning that they will know people who can help them climb their career ladder a lot quicker than somebody who would try to work hard for it themselves. Another one would be experience, meaning they will attend events, holidays and gatherings where they will learn the ways of the other upper class, if I could name it that way. They will learn about the type of language that is used, which is different to the language used by the working class. And lastly, habitus, meaning their parents would have already attended university, setting an example for their children that they will follow without a worry, because it will be something that their family is familiar with. As we can see from the statistics from the previous slide, Hardu and et al. suggest that power and privilege is being used to skew the economic system, to increase the gap between the richest and the rest. It is believed that through education we can make that gap smaller, by abolishing private schools and making all students equal. However, Ferguson suggested that we are still educating different social classes for different functions in society. So, could social mobility be the way to go? Social mobility would provide equal opportunities for all, but it would highly depend on someone's skills and talents. Someone may start as a cleaner and become a manager someday. However, social mobility ignores inequality and instead focuses on each individual's talents. To help explain, the two images are a great way that shows a better future for our society. In image A, we can see that equality is providing everyone with the same opportunities. However, it does not have equal results as there are still people who may not be able to take full advantage of certain opportunities. However, in image B, we can see how equity doesn't provide equal opportunity but instead equal results. It makes the individual equal. To conclude, 
we can say that social mobility could work, but only if we commit to reduce the inequality gap by instead of focusing on individual talents, we have to focus on the result and making the individuals equal themselves.